go. And action. And action. We're waiting on Bob. So Frank, what are we doing now? And Bob's uh, setting me up down here at Crowley College. We're going to learn how to run a torch. We're going to go over some uh, basic uh, oxy cutting, and we're going to cut some straight lines and some circles. Hopefully, I can do it from a, be a beginner's perspective. That's the goal. We want to we want to take this from the very beginning, like as if you've never held a torch before, and show you show you kind of what you got to know if you're going to break out the torch and start cutting some metal. The next thing I'll do is put this together and do the hoses. I will light her up. Who's got my cigarette light? I oh, know, I better get a striker for that. <laughs> <laughs> this off, I've got this fully open. I want to add a little fuel gas. I usually give it a good half turn and I'll light it up. Okay. And then right now, my flame is separated from my tip. If I add oxygen now, I'll probably add too much and then blow it, then just blow it out. So what you want to do is get your tip, your flame connected back to your tip. So you're turning it down, you turn it back up. What you don't want is this. If you turn it down so low, you get all these little soot boogers flying through the air and they'll eventually come back down and land on you. Okay, got a good burn, no smoke. Gently add some oxygen to it. Now, see that right there? That's because there's air in the line. And, and it'll do that for a second until it settles down. Settle down there, darling. Let's go to work. There you go. See? You'll hear it. Different reaction. There's three flames associated with oxyacetylene. You got a carburizing flame, and that's that unburnt turquoise feather in there. That's unburnt fuel gas. That's carburizing or reducing flame. And then we get back down here to a neutral flame. You hear that pop? That's close. That's close. That's a neutral flame. But well, that's where that's where you're going to do 95, 98 percent of your work is with a neutral flame. And then the other one is an oxidizing flame. Now people do this by accident and by mistake. Uh, they don't know what's going on. They should do that. You are starving the available oxygen that you can use to cut. It. See, I'm pushing the, the jet, it's doing that. But look at here. You hear it ripping? Okay, you can see it also, it's long. Okay, so that brings us up to the point where we're gonna cut, right? Yeah. Okay, well we need to stop because we need to discuss something. Yes. And I, before I shut the flame off, I'm gonna do this. What do we know about mill scale? Uh, it's hard to get off uh, yeah. without gouging in the material. In right. the and when you heat it, it does what? Pops it and flakes. Pops. Okay, so we'll get the old Scotty right down in here. We're going to watch a reaction here. See that the flaking off there? If I went and got something a little bit thicker, you could see it more. But see how that's kind of popping and flaking off of there? All right, so, you know, when you're cutting dark glasses, something, I've been wearing these guys here for grinding and stuff, but I found this dark one, and it's actually pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I see you found my goggles, I old got, buddy. I got these goggly you. on. You, found, you, you already gotten in. Yeah. Everybody gets into my stuff when it's they get like down here. Look at that. Steam powered aerial plane uh, kind of I'm stuff right about. there, boy. Are those dark? Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, they're wait like, till I get to cutting. You, you think it's too dark because you can't awesome. see in the shot, but um, when you get to cutting, it's like, wow, I like that. Yeah. And then I like this guy here because, you know, it's a it's a pretty pretty yeah. robust. And then I can flip this baby down, and it's pretty dark. Now here's what I've learned. Here's what's happened to me. I have been over the top of a cut with safety glasses, goggles, and a clear face shield. That's three layers of protection. Mm -hmm. I'll get a hot piece of mill scale in my eye. Gosh. And then you go to the eye doctor and he's chewing on you. It's like, how come you didn't wear your safety glasses? And he gets that Dremel tool out to about 28,000 and he says, don't move. And he's gonna pick this thing out of your eye. Trust me, I ain't gonna move. But it hacks me off because it, it, I mean, it happens. Yeah. And then the other thing is <clears throat> I get all my layout done and I'm getting ready to make a cut. 
and I'll test, I'll hit, I'll do the oxygen lever one more time right before my cut and it's fouled. The tip isn't burning long, it's got some kind of turbulence in there. Why does a piece of mill scale get right next to the oxygen? Hmm. It's like a vacuum or something, but it goes right there and that's where it's at. Shut the torch off, push your wire through there one time, relight it, and it's good to go. Hmm. But if you don't do that, then you got a bunch of slag and yeah. junk. All right, for a cut, uh, we need to understand coupling distance. Okay. Coupling distance is how far the flame is off of the material, the mm -hmm. preheat flame. That's a coupling distance. Too far away, you're inefficient with your oxygen. Too close, and you're burying your flame down in the cut, right? Mm -hmm. That's not cool either. So we'll light her up. And before I get real happy about what's happening here, I may step over and finally adjust my pressure. I like that. Yeah. Okay, so we said something about coupling distance. If I'm too far up here, I've got a broad preheat. And when, if I hit the oxygen lever, I'm just gonna, I'm not efficient with my oxygen. And then if I get in here and I've really crammed this thing way down in there, that's not cool either. About an eighth, three sixteenths, and you bring your flame over to the edge of your steel, gets up to that melt point, ease into it. Then you can make the cut. Travel speed, that's the last part of the equation. And we got a pretty clean cut. Yeah. Here, you know, we, I don't like to grind. I don't like to hear a bunch of hammering and grinding, all this excessive noise. Makes me irritable. Don't need it. Hurts your ears. It hurts your ears, you know. You can't have a normal conversation and you can't think. So if I'm cutting a bunch of straight lines, I can go over and make me a, what we call a burn bar. Uh, I want to cut straight. You hear that? Yeah. That's a high pitch whistle. Turn it off immediately. You got a flame burning back up in there. Okay. Oh, okay. And by the way, you can have them get back in here too. Make sure that's getting snug. Yeah, I accidentally slipped and and uh, popped the torch out. And we were, you know, camera guy, well, he's not going to edit that out. It's a classic screw up by old Bob. <laughs> I do it all the time. Me too. Me too. Oh uh, man, people walk up to me and they go, "Man, we like it when you mess up because you're like us." Well, yeah, yeah, I am. It happens. I'm not going to try to hide it. You know? Okay, so let's try this again. Uh, I want to use the burn bar as a straight edge, so I'm cutting one-handed. And that's why I lock my valves down here below. Uh, I'll get that going. That rolled factory edge is a little easier, harder to get into. If you hear a, a ripping and a snorting, that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. And that, that's not as, I'm getting old and I'm a little herky-jerky and you can see it in the lines in there. And that's called the kerf. The width that's blown out of there is called the kerf. <clears throat> but again, you don't have to do a lot of cleaning. We can hit that with a grinder and a flapper disc and we're good to go, we're good to weld. Yep. Now, Let's say that we're putting a couple of pieces together or you have some joint configuration that you require a bevel. A cool bean, let's bevel. We can bevel by hand. I like to use this. I've had this guy for a long time. Here's how I hold the torch. I put these two fingers down and this, I hate it when it does that, I'm sorry. It, <laughs> 
but I'm I'm put I'm letting that ride yeah. a lot along the inside of that, so that's how I keep the same angle all the time. Anyway, uh, we can uh, we'll relight and we'll do a bevel here. Same flame. Now, if I've got some really thick material or it's cold, I know it's cold. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll cheat a little bit. You know, I want to cut a good bevel. Heat rises. I'll come in here and preheat this thing. Oh yeah. And I'll preheat it from the bottom. If I need to, I will. Uh, <clears throat> I'll run this guy up here and turn that magnet on, and that's less of a chance of him slipping. I got a good rip. Man, I can't believe you're wearing my glasses. That's just something man. They're awful nice. How about that? Again, it didn't take very long for me to set the correct pressures mm -hmm. and get things going here, and I don't have to do a bunch of grind. You grind to clean and you grind to prep, you shouldn't have to grind to correct too many things. You know, that's been my philosophy over the years.